Everyone and everything requires energy to interact with our world. A car requires gasoline to accelerate. Lamps require electricity. And birds require lift just to fly. But how do we, as living organisms, acquire our energy? It all comes down to adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, and cell respiration. As gasoline is to a car, ATP is the fuel we need to do work in our muscles. So cell respiration is simply a manner of synthesizing ATP. More specifically, it is the process of combining adenosine diphosphate, or ADP, and inorganic phosphate. However, this process becomes complicated quite quickly. We can break things up into four sub-processes. Glycolysis, the transition reaction, the Krebs cycle, and electron transport. These processes, although they do possess a feeling of natural order and do connect with one another in various ways, occur just about simultaneously. Nonetheless, we shall begin with gly glycolysis. Glycolysis is an anaerobic reaction, meaning it does not require oxygen. It is the only part of cell respiration with this property. As the name suggests, the process requires glucose, the chemical formula shown here, and essentially only glucose. All this reaction does is slice up the molecule into a set of more useful chemical substances as well as some energy. This is a bit like salvaging old parts from an automobile. Ultimately, 2 pyruvate, 2 ATP, and 2 NADH will be salvaged. These will come in handy later on in cell respiration. Next comes the transition reaction. This reaction occurs in the cytoplasm as well as the previous one. Using pyruvate forged during glycolysis, this process is a matter of breaking things down even further. Through the addition of coenzyme A, pyruvate is transferred into acetyl coenzyme A and 2-NADH. These substances are fundamental for the more powerful steps in cell respiration. Let's quickly review what substances we have now. 2 NADH from glycolysis, 2 NADH from tr the transition reaction, an acetyl coenzyme A from the transition reaction, and 2 ATP from glycolysis, which is what cell respiration is ultimately striving to create. With the substances in mind, it's time to move on to the Krebs cycle. Taking place in the mitochondria, carbon atoms from the acetyl coenzyme A are stripped away using a substance entitled Oxaloacetate. NAD plus and FADH, broken down NADH, collect hydrogen atoms and remaining electrons from acetyl coenzyme A. Bonds are broken just right and energy is utilized. Acetyl coenzyme A is transferred into 3 NADH, FADH2, and 1 ATP. The final and truly most spectacular process in cell respiration is the electron transport chain. Three ATB have been produced so far, but this creates approximately 30. In actuality, the other cycles are a little bit more like preparations for this one. So the electron transport chain is as it sounds. Electrons break away from the NADH and FADH2 and run across the mitochondrial membrane. These electrons will bond to the oxygen at the end of the chain. Energy is produced through this process similar to a battery, but how is this energy utilized? Work is done to pump excess protons out of the intermembrane space. This is a bit like stretching out a spring. Seeing as the si sizable gradient of the electrons still exists, all of the protons are strongly impelled to re-enter the mitochondria. The only feasible way for them to do so is through ATP synthase. 
and from this, 30 ATP is produced. This concludes the, the spectacular cycle of cell respiration.